Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. I've got some excellent news for you concerning Intel's graphics cards. And that is that the company are almost certainly going to be ultra competitive for a number of years against not only AMD, but also Nvidia, with some rather interesting comments that have surfaced on social media for their plans of releasing a number of architectures in not too long a time at all. So let's get into that. But first, just a quick word from this video's sponsor. If you've just built a shiny new PC, you'll need a genuine copy of Windows so you can enjoy all of the features such as personalized themes and of course getting rid of that annoying activation watermark. We're partnering with WhoKeys to give you guys a great discount on Windows 10 keys and throughout November there's a 30% off discount by using the coupon code RGT during checkout. I've purchased several keys from them in the past under a personal non-RGT affiliated account and they've all worked flawlessly with delivery being rather quick. After November the coupon code reverts back to 25% off so if you want to pick up a copy of Windows for as little as $12 or a cheap and legit copy of Office then check out the links in the video description below and use coupon code RGT. As I'm sure almost everyone at this point knows, Intel will be releasing Alchemist early next year. Now I'm hearing that first of all it's going to be released on laptops and then desktops, but either way this is going to be Intel's first foray into discrete graphics. And the product is shaping up to be pretty impressive. It's going to be about on par with an RTX 3070, give or take, but of course it's going to be fully feature packed with stuff like real-time ray tracing and perhaps most important of all it also offers Intel's XCSS as kind of a, a bonus. It will be running a little faster if it's running on Alchemist versus a competitor card but ultimately it will offer a solution which is quite similar to that of DLSS or NVIDIA's Deep Learning Super Sampling. But yeah, next year is going to be just absolutely nuts, of course, in graphics because RTX 40 and RDNA 3 also launch. And the performance targets of those cards, as I've mentioned numerous times at this point, 2.4 to around three times faster with NVIDIA and AMD respectively. Well, yeah, that's much faster than what Intel are offering. But there's a very interesting comment um, that's surfaced on social media from one of Intel's employees. I'm going to read this verbatim because I find it so interesting. So the um, tweet actually uh, originated because Freeman235 said, 2025. RTX 6090 Super 800 watts and this is of course in reference to the fact that Nvidia's GPUs are going to be rather power hungry but Bryce who is an Intel graphics employee he is actually an ARC community advocate and also part of their driver team says and I quote if all goes well that could be when Intel ARC Druid comes out game on. Now Furthermore, if you look at the multi-year roadmap which Intel have put out already, so this is public, it's not, you know, me leaking it or anything like that. So we have Alchemist in Q1 2022, we have Battle Mage, Celestial, and then finally Druid. You will notice that there are no dates attached to these, but according to this Intel employee, Bryce, yeah, um, that's apparently going to be in 2025. Now, it, of course, this means that essentially they're going to be releasing well, assuming nothing weird happens anyway, nothing hinky happens, a new architecture roughly every year, which also kind of matches what Intel have said previously about it wanting to, you know, just accelerate the releases of its products to keep up with competition. And also, one of my own exclusive kind of recently, I was told that well, yeah, we're going to see Intel release, you know, its first generation again in Q1, but it's not going to be that much later, perhaps even nine months possibly, that we're going to see Generation 2 release. And this is, of course, when you look at the grander scheme of things, quite logical, because again, RTX 3070 for your first foray into GPUs is pretty decent, particularly if they can release the card at a decent price. I'm hearing that lower end SKUs are going to be like 150 to 200 US dollars, although according to what I'm hearing right now, Intel has not provided pricing to AIBs, although they are going to be working with AIBs, so companies like MSI and Asus and whomever, basically if they partner with Intel on another product, for example a motherboard, it's pretty damn likely that they're going to be partnering with them in GPUs, and this is also going to leave let's say marketing in some very interesting questions because of marketing development funds which typically Nvidia piled tons of it on but obviously if Intel has ties with them 
for you know motherboards or whatever it, it's just basically you know what it's just gonna be really interesting to see how all of that plays out uh, but their mid-range cards I suspect are not going to be you know a couple hundred bucks they're obviously going to be a lot more expensive um, they had originally planned to make them quite cheap I'd heard even under 400 bucks was at one point the target but then lots of stuff happened as everyone knows in the world and also there have been some decisions made in Intel internally not least of which Raja Kodori's promotion where he's basically now directly responsible for things like profit and loss inside uh, Intel graphics so I don't think it's going to be that cheap but I also think that Intel will not want to be ultra expensive and I think that they're going to price them as cheap as they can for market conditions which could be good but obviously the other thing as well is that TSMC are also cranking up the prices for its partners we'll get more into that in just a second so I do believe that this is almost certainly the case that Intel are going to want to release a new card as quickly as possible and this is really good news for us as end users of course because you know I've said this a trillion times at this point competition is only ever a good thing in the market and ultimately we are in a position where you know Nvidia are facing a lot of competition from AMD but Nvidia still have an awful lot of dominance in the market and you can make arguments that Nvidia have you know perhaps software that you prefer or you know good marketing or whatever but ultimately you know the reasons don't really matter essentially what does matter is competition is only ever going to be good for us as end users and hopefully this will drive down the pricing and next up, I want to discuss with you guys a story that's been floating around that AMD have raised the prices of the GPUs that it's selling to its board partners by 20 to 40 US dollars. Now, to be clear here, when I refer to GPU, I don't mean it in what we generally refer to as a GPU, and that is the entire video card, graphics card, whatever. I'm referring to literally the GPU itself, or more specifically the kit that AMD sells to partners like power color or msi or whomever and basically the price again has raised apparently between 20 to 40 us dollars i'll leave a link to all of this of course in the video description you can see yourself the source on screen but yeah i mean one of the reasons that this has happened of course is that tsmc themselves have raised the price of uh, its 7nm wafers and ultimately this is leading of course to amd be like huh well you know the gpus are basically going over msrp uh we don't want to get screwed over <laughs> um so we're going to pass the cost over to the aibs i mean obviously i'm not saying that that's exactly their thinking but roughly speaking that's pretty much what's been going on here and it's kind of like one of those things where it could possibly raise the price of the cards but honestly they're so inflated at the moment in msrp it probably isn't going to make that much of a difference and that's of course like oh the costs have gone up you know what that sounds like a 400 percent increase then on the you know the 20 bucks or whatever but being serious for a moment this is probably not going to be something that you yourself feels too much but it is going to be interesting to see how this affects uh, AIBs going forward ultimately though this also leads to another story that's been kind of floating around and a couple of websites have reported this and that is that basically AMD may be leaving uh, TSMC which of course they've accomplished so much with if you think about it they've you know AMD themselves are fabulous they didn't used to be of course back in the day um, but through a series of decisions well they are now essentially fabulous and so of course they utilize companies like TSMC or Global Foundries or well Samsung to produce chips but ultimately their greatest partnership recently has been TSMC and while it's very easy to give AMD's engineering teams a ton of credit and let's face it AMD's engineering teams do deserve a ton of credit everything from you know the chaps who are creating the you know the memory controllers or the memory interfaces all the way to those who are designing like, the logic on the actual processes themselves or the driver teams all of them have done like a stellar job when you think about their company size versus intel or nvidia but it's also very arguable that tsmc have piled a ton of uh, their own talent and success towards AMD and this of course has led to very interesting uh, innovations in the industry like chiplets of course AMD have been pioneering 3D stacking and all of this other jazz so 
Long story short then, the gist of the story has been that uh, AMD are not happy, quote unquote, with their partnership because obviously they're raising prices and stuff like that of TSMC. Therefore, they're going to be going with Samsung. And I have to say, I'm hearing that that's just not true. Um, ultimately, I do suspect that AMD may choose to release some chips um, utilizing Samsung's processors. They could certainly do that. Um, but I suspect that their mainline processors, which are for like, you know, Ryzen or the server processors, for example, or possibly, you know, their GPUs, that type of thing, I suspect that they're going to want to continue to snuggle up very cozily in TSMC's, you know, uh, good books, because ultimately, you know, it's just been, it's just been so successful for them. And I'm not saying that Samsung's 3NM processor is crap or anything, but it's like, if you have a winning formula and you're doing really well, it just doesn't make sense to leave. And there's a reason that even Intel are, you know, moving towards TSMC for its GPU production. Obviously, um, first generation, that is gonna be uh, on the uh, 6NM process from TSMC. But I'm hearing even the subsequent architectures are gonna stick to TSMC, despite the fact that Intel isn't fabulous. Well, you know, <sighs> I mean, at one point, they might as well have been fabulous with how little progress they made on their nodes. I guess they might as well have been. But, yeah, you know, Intel are kind of coming back quite strongly. And uh, I think we've seen this quite extensively with Alder Lake. And obviously, that's, you know, a very separate uh, story itself. But ultimately, yeah, I don't personally believe that the story is true, at least how it's being portrayed in a lot of websites. I don't think it's going to be a case of, like, AMD are just abandoning TSMC wholesale and going, nope, see you later, Jack. We're going to be instead be going with uh, um, with uh, Samsung. I suspect it could be like a partnership where they're having multiple different companies produce, you know, different chips. And honestly, this is this has happened before. Like, you know, it, it's nothing new. Um, I believe it was like Global Foundries back in the day that were producing the I/O chips for uh, older Zen processors. So just you know, it just is what it is. Uh, so that's just kind of my take on it. With that said, thank you very much for checking out the video. If you have enjoyed it, then you know what to do. Leave a likey on the video and I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.